uh, certainly my pleasure to uh, be up here this morning to, to share some of my 42 years experience in the, um, all of those being at John Holland. Um, I started as a designer at John Holland when we did everything in the house ourselves. So I had seven years before I then went into a lengthy sort of construction life, um, which took me um, interstate and overseas. Um, one of my projects, I was construction manager for the Friendship Bridge, the first ever bridge of the Mekong River between Laos and Thailand. And then back to Sydney where I was project manager for Prospect Water Filtration Plant and then had roles as time went as construction manager for the Olympics, for the delivery of the showground. Um, and probably about since the year 2000, I've been in a role as John Holland's senior um, design director in, in New South Wales. Um, interestingly, I actually got offered uh, both jobs um, uh, in the year 2000, construction manager for New South Wales or design manager, and I went the way I went because I think there's not enough people that understand what designers need and what constructors need, and that'll um, feed into what I'm going to talk about this morning. So just very quickly, um, that photo um, was in fact the day before the 1978 um, VFL, as it was then, AFL Grand Final. I had 180 games with Hawthorne, a uh, couple of premierships, so we did win um, the day after this. But that was me with a posed photo with the press about an hour before the Grand Final parade down Burke Street, um, where I was standing at Parliament House Station, part of the underground that was being developed in Melbourne back in 1978. Um, the reason I just wanted to start with that and, and some thoughts is that with my background, I went into design, at, at, albeit at John Holland, um, and then into construction. The, the first comment I want to make is that a lot of engineers, and I'll talk engineers for the minute, um, might either go from university straight into a consulting practice and not get um, what I would regard as appropriate construction thinking and construction background. And likewise, guys that go into construction tend to have uh, little likelihood that they go and get some design experience. And the point I want to make initially is that I think designers will be better designers when, they're, when they've got a better um, understanding background with uh, construction. And I'm still a believer that, I should, that we should see some of our construction guys having a better technical base that makes them better all-round engineers. And I think that's something for the industry to consider still. It's been debated a lot through Engineers Australia as how we do that, but I think that's something that we've still got to do better in terms of the earlier training that people have. So moving on very quickly, I want to talk about design management really at a, at, at a contractor perspective, not, not a con client perspective or a, a consultant perspective or stakeholder. But you know, what does successful design management of infrastructure pro projects look like in, in that DNC environment? Um, you know, we could pose the question, it is obvious, or really is it? So you know, what, what, what are the factors that I've seen over 42 years? And um, I can say that I've had been involved with an, um, a, a vast number of very, very successful um, infrastructure projects. So, for me, people are at the centre of everything we do. Um, and you know, as engineers, I just talked about our, our university education. We have very little um, uh, learning at that stage in people skills. So there's a shot of uh, the Southern Standard of Melbourne Cricket Ground, which I was construction manager for many years ago. A grandstand, 48,000 people. We built it, the DNC, we built it in 15 months. Um, you know, with a design only just ahead of the construction uh, back in 1991. So as we undertake a project, you know, what, one of the things I want to pose and, and leave as, we, as I talk through this morning, what sort of legacy are we leaving on people that we worked with um, in, in the delivery stage, whether it be our designers, whether it be stakeholders, whether it be the client, what sort of legacy are we leaving on them, our relationships, our working behaviours, our communications as we work with people? And then obviously for infrastructure, you know, we're leaving behind infrastructure that is for the people. So I just want to pose those couple of th thoughts for a start, which will feed into what I'm going to talk about. Um, another sort of 
aerial there of the Sydney showground, um, Homebush. Again, that was built in 16 months, believe it or not. Uh, with des we didn't manage the design on that one. Um, APP did that. Uh, we had the managing contractor role. I was the construction manager. You can see um, there the, the, the GWS um, uh, ground, home ground now sitting in the middle of the, the showground. Um, and all the um, agricultural facilities that, that are now widely used by, by people all year round. Um, but again, I had 9,000 workers go through that job um, in, in induction during the construction. So it was a, um, the messages that we want to be sharing with our construction people, a similar message we want to leave in, um, now in, in design management as well, is to, you know, what are the things we want those people to understand so they, they're going home safely at the end of every day, that they know what the game plan is, so they know what the goals are. Um, so as design team manager, very quickly, my purpose as a design director or design team manager, uh, responsibility of the design team associated with the construction and delivery of the works, ensuring that the, the best for project outcome is achieved by coordinating with the team while managing technical, commercial, personal development, stakeholder and company or joint venture outcomes. So very quickly, you know, the, 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 the arrow there, um, what direction are we heading? So as design director, design team manager, you know, what are the distractions that we're going to have? I'm, I'm forever encouraging people to be open and honest and, and saying it is. We, we, it's, you know, we don't like surprises as to um, that, that might be affecting some aspect of a, a project. And something I, I, I guess in my role as a design director, I'm forever thinking, what don't people know? What's the gap that's got to be filled? You know, do they understand the tasks? Have the, and having techniques for, for checking that they understand the task, the, the, the time frame, the deliverable, um, what they've got to do. In other words, giving clarity uh, and giving surety that people are on the right path to the outcome that is needed. Um, and I'll just say, again, it's, it's an obvious sort of statement, but all parties should be doing everything they can to remove obstacles and uh, removing distractions, avoiding misinformation, avoiding rework, um, and, avoid, and avoiding and at least minimising change. I'll talk to change again in, 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 in a minute. Um, but providing inputs at the, at the right time. So as a design manager, we're really um, we're managers of risk. Uh, it's risks at a safety level, at a cost level, at a program level, uh, and that carries with it responsibilities and, account and accountabilities. I won't focus any more on that. We've obviously got policies, plans, procedures, permits, and in the design space, we have a design management plan. Um, so, I mean, as the photo shows, you know, I'm forever challenged, what is round the corner? Have we thought of all the risks? Um, being a step ahead is, some, is a mantra that I have in terms of the way I've got to operate, but I'm, I guess I'm encouraging people in, in, in the design teams and, and at all, all the stakeholders levels that you know, we're, we're being a step ahead. Have we mitigated all the risks? And, and for me, safety is the number one priority for design. Um, it is at that stage we have the greatest opportunity to actually impact a safe outcome for the workers in the field. I am forever saying to individual designers, people that have worked with me, um, put yourselves in the shoes of the steel fixer, you know, to think about how that bar is going to be placed or how that particular element is going to be built. That ties in with the initial comments I made about experience of, of, of people at a younger age. Do they understand, um, yeah, for construction guys, do they understand how a structure is meant to be ha behaving and monitoring it during the construction? So in the Sydney Metro, when we're digging 30 metre deep holes um, in the middle of the city, um, you know, for crow's nest five metres next to, next to Pacific Highway, do, do our construction guys understand how a structure is behaving? I'm, I can say yes, they do, because we've, we've set up processes for, for, for them to understand what what monitoring and instrumentation and so on is part of the shoring system. But, um, and, and for designers, do they really understand what they're detailing, um, what the impact is on the safety of the worker that's got to do that work? Um, so 
yet I believe that the leadership in that space of, of understanding that is, is led by too few. So again, I'm going, you know, one of my challenges is to constantly try and bring people up um, into that space to be, to be thinking of, of, of the implications of what they're doing. Um, so I'll move on, and, and I won't dwell on this slide at all, but just quickly, the purpose of the design management plan you know, it, it provides the process pass to ensure the design complies with the con contract requirements. So a Sydney Metro Tunnels job that I'm the design director for now, there's $110, million of design, a $2.8 billion project that, that, that we're delivering. It's a follow on from what we did on Northwest Rail uh, Tunnels, with, which everyone would be aware of that is now operating fantastically with the new Metro. But um, those tunnels we delivered seven months early it didn't happen by coincidence. So some of the things I'm going to talk about as success factors um, were very much part of what we're doing currently on the Metro and, and did on North West Rail Tail Tunnel. And, and for and the John Holland perspective, the job before that with the new Glenfield to Leamington Rail Line, uh, uh, you know, as, as examples. So again, I, I, I won't dwell the objectives of the, of, of the plan um, you know, complying with the, and meets the requirements of the of the of the scope of works, um, and, you know that it incorporates environmental sustainability, the um, safety constructability requirements, meets the durability and performance principles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'll, mo I'll I'll move on because I don't want to focus you know that sort of level of detail at all. The design management plan you know covers design requirements, roles and responsibilities, communication and reporting, design and review process. Um, you know, um, risk management I've already spoken about, design consultant management, cost planning, program. This is a bit of a welcome to the, a day in the life of a design director of a design management team, the, the sorts of things that we've, we've, we've got to cover. Um, and in doing all that, I've, I've got a mantra that, you know, take program for instance, people will say, oh, we can't deliver that, that's an impossible target. Well, I've got a mantra, you know, find a way, make a way. Um, you know, there, there is a, always a way that you can work through a situation. Um, further elements of the design management plan, change man dealing with change management, document re records management, monitoring review and improvement. So I pose the question there, it's as easy as having a design management plan, that, you know, a document that's however thick, half an inch of, of, of paper thick. Um, yeah, or is it? Um, and just while I've got that slide, change management, yeah, what we find constantly on these big infrastructure jobs is that the best success is when we get our key construction guys in during the tender and that they own the, what we, the methodology that we develop at tender and carry it on as the, the key leaders then in the delivery stage. Um, and and having them in, integrally involved with the design. I think as an industry, that design construct interface is still really not well done. I keep talking about the bar being here and still wanting the bar up, up there. So what I'm gonna keep talking about of, of we're only as good as the interactions we have as a total team. So whether it's stakeholders, client, design team, construction team. Um, but it's, you know, it's critical to manage change on major infrastructure jobs. When you've got lots of change going on, um, it can certainly disrupt and cause major inefficiencies. And when it's tax, generally for the infrastructure jobs, it is taxpayer money. And that's not in anyone's interest to have um, sort of that level of, of, of disruption. So what I'm, all that leads on is, you know, Design is complex. So there's a photo of going back to Lane Cove Tunnel days on Gore Hill Freeway. Um, yeah, so there is, so just if I look at that photo, um, straight away it, it brings to mind you know, the, the challenges of um, dealing with existing traffic apart from the future traffic that the design's got to be designed for. There's lots of retaining walls in there. Is the construction team, team putting the right um, design input criteria into the designers so that they do, do the job once and do it properly and efficiently um, 
talking, uh, feeding in what the staging is, what the surcharge loading is, uh, the sequence that, we, that we're going to build things. Is there then the understanding of, of the utilities that, that, that have to be uh, incorporated in the final product and how does that relate to the existing? How does that affect the staging and the traffic management? Um, what's the, what, what are the structures going to look like? The stakeholders, residents and, and proper, uh, businesses adjacent will have a real interest and, and the car users, what something looks like. So, so getting um, multiple parties there, um, multiple designers, so designers within disciplines and multidiscipline working together so that you actually get the, the interaction um, is, is a challenging task. So it doesn't just happen by giving a consultant a, a consultancy agreement saying go off and design this. It actually is all about how well the total industry is working to get together. You know, how do the concrete trucks actually get there into that route? What's the effect of the route for getting that concrete from the plant to that site and getting the tester to that site? How might that influence the final product for, for, for infrastructure that's going to be 100 years serving, serving the people of New South Wales. Another example of, you know, of, of mine, the, the replacement research reactor at, um, at Lucas Heights for production of our nuclear isotopes, medical um, research and, and materials research facility. But our Argentinian uh, partner, INVAP, uh, was busy designing the innards of there of the um, the heavy water tank and the, and the um, I'll call it the nuclear tank, um, you know, very complicated. And, and we, uh, we set up our Australian design team, in that case, uh, I'll give them a plug, Connor Wagner, now, now Oricon, um, were working with me, and, and in those days I probably didn't have the construction guys on board because it was a six year project. Um, we started from a clean sheet um, with INVAP, in Argentina, um, the people came out here, but we had to go over there to actually establish what were the criteria, what were we designing, how we, you know, what's the starting point? You know, getting back to what I said before, what don't people know? So there, this job started as a as a as an absolute clean sheet. Yet we had a 17 metre high, high um, um, 1.7 metre thick, heavy density concrete, uh, heavily reinforced with that had to interact with a massive number of very closely toleranced penetrations and castings that were actually servicing the real aim, which was um, what was going on inside that, that nuclear tank. So um, you know, what do people need to know and, and when do they need to know it? So that challenge of it, um, it's all about uh, communications and, and, and interaction between teams. So there we were doing it on an international field. Here we are inside the, the innards of um, the tunnel boring machine for those that sort of haven't, haven't seen, seen someone or one of those uh, where you've got the moving conveyors carrying the spoil and they carry, the conveyors carry up to 5.5 kilometres back, um, back to where the machine started. Um, by the time we get there, we've got cylinders that are used to launch the machine for. We've got pumps and motors and electrical um, interfaces all going on there and, 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 and people in a very challenging, very detailed, very complex sort of environment. Design management on these infrastructure jobs, you're actually involved with all of that complexity at a detailed level. And in my, my job as a, as a design team manager, at a, let's call it a global le level, having a, a, a bigger perspective on what's really going on. Um, people who've worked with me will, will know that I'm forever talking about the devils in the detail. I said we don't like surprises, but at the end of the day, um, things like how are holding down bolts going to be detailed, it's, a, it's something I've um, probably, in the role as construction manager at the Olympics, saw so many head contractors um, not understanding the, the implications of tolerance on placing bolts with the, the future placement of the steel and the effect that that can have on safety and the effect that that can have on productivity if the bolts aren't in the right location. So thinking, in, here I'm just picking an example where you've, you've, you've actually got to understand the, the interaction between if you like the concrete design and someone else is doing the steel design but they don't work together unless the, the, the thinking's being done together 
you know, quite often the right answer is to leave a pocket and, and fix the bolts properly to the right sort of tolerance um, you know, after the concrete's been poured. But too often I've seen bolts end up in the wrong position because people don't think that through, both at a design stage and a construction stage in the right way. That shot's um, a shot of um, the Martin Place Caverns underground but now at, 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 um, at Castle Row Street and Elizabeth Street. Uh, and you can see the size of the, the little guys in, in orange there, the size of the ca caverns relative to the people. So there's a massive amount of detail going on at, a, um, at both a global level and, a, and, a, and that local level, the reinforcement detailing. What's going to be the method of getting concrete down into those tunnels for a start? What's the method of placing it within the form? What are the castings that have got to be incorporated? You, you can see from the, you know, the, the um, the amount of equipment in, in there before the forms are even there, um, remembering all the reinforcement is, is also being placed against uh, um, a membrane system so that, so that we're watertight. So it doesn't all happen just by having isolate, designers working in isolation um, from um, the construction team, from the supplier industry um, and, and other stakeholders. You know, the design management gets actively involved with the temporary works design and the formwork design. I won't dwell on that, but it just gives you some of a bit of a feel for the size of what's going on on this particular infrastructure here in Sydney right now. Um, a further shot out at Marrickville for, for the dive, um, where, where the metro trains ultimately will, will, will enter the tunnels. Um, they come from above ground and, and, and dive down at, at Marrickville. But that photo, uh, in the distance, you can see the, the gant yellow gantry cranes um, of our casting yard. We've got 100,000 segments to manufacture, which we manufacture ourselves on site at Marrickville uh, to, to service the tunnel um, a, and a full uh, factory. We've got the conveyor systems, we've, we've got acoustic sheds, so that we can operate 24 hours a day on the, on, on the tunnelling. The design of all of that, that, I'll call it temporary works and the layouts, where the roads are going to be because we've got big trucks and big deliveries happening, the design of all of that, hap that again happens by our construction guys, we call them the comics, setting out the layout of, of, of where we want everything everything to be and, and again I'll get back the best jobs work when we get that done at tender so we have very short time frames at tender but certainly at John Holland CBB which has been a, a joint venture for a long period of time now the old Tees and John Holland um, we get our methodology set at tender and then go about um, detailing and delivering so Again, feeding that information to designers, you know, what are the surcharge loadings that are going to be sitting behind the dive at any point in time? And at different stages, we had you know, 500 tonne cranes in some spots uh, lifting, um, lifting the TBM components. The cut ahead of the TBM is 110 tonnes. So thinking about it right at the design stage so that we're getting that in right from the start and getting efficiency in, in what we're going to do. I'm not going to talk too much about concrete at all. Um, there's a couple of slides here and I just want to share a couple of things. One of them in the concrete, a specification of concrete. And again, it's um, as a design team director, I'm forever working with the designers um, to, to see that we get the, bot, the right sort of uh, specification onto the drawings of, of what we really need to do. And, you know, often with the best intentions, designers are trying to specify everything. Uh, thinking that, that will give a better product um, and outcome. And I'm just going to pose the thought that more tests does not necessarily equal and, um, and, and it usually won't equal better product. So, um, you know, the, the, that, those words, horses for courses, um, we certainly put a lot of effort into making sure we only need to do what's really relevant to, to, the, to the outcome. Um, for those that sort of aren't familiar, just to give quickly a, a bit of a feel, the, the lead up, um, say on Sydney Metro Tunnels and North West was the same. The lead up for our main mixes, one for the, for the segments um, and also for the in-situ linings that I just showed in the, in the cabins, there's about eight months of work that we do within the industry, so with our designers, with, our, with the suppliers um, and, and quite often um, 
some of the exhibitors that are downstairs with various admixes and so on all go into the, the process. So we start with lab tests. We started, I think, this job we started with eight different mixes, even though we had already knew what we'd used on Northwest. We actually started again with eight different mixes at the lab test stage, getting um, a feel for some of the um, hardened properties, which led in narrowing, the, narrowing the, the mixes for field testing where we looked at workability and um, pumpability and, and various hard, concrete hardened properties, narrowing the list again further to, to those that we'd actually take into fire testing. So that process as, as a lead in on infra, major infrastructure jobs is, is some eight, eight, eight months or so. Also something we were often, um, and, and pretty similar for both segments and for the in situ lining. Um, you know, going back to that photo on the Martin Place caverns, when you're, when you're 30 and 40 and 50 metres underground and the entry point might be another 200 metres away from the, the start of the cavern at surface level, you know, just what, getting this right uh, for, for concrete supply and, and, and getting, then getting a, the sort of outcome we're getting in the field, and, and I hope the construction guys are doing an absolute fabulous job in terms of the quality of what we are getting, but it all happens because of the planning and the interaction that we get back at the design stage um, and the designers being able to take some of this mix information as well and interacting with you know, the durability and sustainability things all at the same time. Um, Production tests, what are the right production tests given, you know, we've got very little opportunity to go backwards when we've built, built a, a tunnel, with, um, but we've got to make sure that what's going into the field is going to be right. So what are the short term tests in production that's marrying out of what we might have done in our, in our, in our trial testing? You know, what sort of crack width and, um, needs to be chosen as design criteria? Sometimes the clients do that, but sometimes we've actually got to work with the clients as well to make sure that 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 consideration and the effect on maintenance and the, eff the effect on the future uh, repair regime is, is the right thing for, for that infrastructure. Um, I'll move on quickly through some of this. Um, just understanding that durability criteria earlier and having that interaction with the, the actual designers themselves so that there's a, a two-way interaction on, on, on what are, um, yeah, what's, what's required. Um, the durability modelling needs to be, is, well it is sensitive to the input values and um, it's important that, that we as constructors and the design team themselves and durability consultant um, that, that, that everyone understands the impacts on the outcomes. And also when jobs are you know, 15 kilometres long, making sure that there's, uh, um, that there's site specific where there's changes in, for instance, the environment. Um, all of that needs a certain amount of testing uh, beforehand as well. So um, that certainly makes my job as a design director thinking what are all those things, what are those inputs that are going to come at the right time so that these things uh, can be married together in the right way. Um, a lot of others are talking about the, the, um, the technical things of these, but just a couple of things I'll comment. And, and, and not give the answers, but fly ash benefits in concrete has been around for a long while, but as, as we're seeing the, the close down of, and I'm sure, that, I'm sure the concrete industry is thinking about this, but as we're seeing the close down of some of the coal fired power stations, what's the implication for infrastructure jobs and contractors um, of some of those shutdowns of what that might do to mixed designs and if put it in the context of what I've just talked about at some of those eight month lead times, um, is the concrete industry itself ready for some of the surprises? And we are already seen it a couple of times with, with plants, some of the major suppliers of, of, of fly ash that might be in our mix where they've got shutdowns for periods of time and you know, alternatives and do the alternatives actually give the same um, concrete hardened properties and workability and, and sustainability type things. Um, Sorry, I'll go back there. Um, and just limits on supplementary cementitious materials. Again, yeah, if some of these things are very obvious for, to a lot of people, but just the effects on workability, the early strength needs, you know, carbonation requirements, chloride ingress requirements, um, those sorts of things can all be uh, potentially in conflict with each other uh, and understanding 
you know, and, and specifiers, um, both at a client level and even at a consultant level, understanding how those things can actually influence um, um, the outcomes. And in formulating sustainability requirements, just the balance needed between um, you know, high early strength and, and workability and, and, and those sorts of factors. So I'll keep moving. Um, um, I won't dwell on this concrete te technology one as either because I've, you know, but obviously over the years I've seen, you know, significant um, improvements in, in admixtures which then gives, you know, obvious outcomes with better slump controls and, and, and controlled pump reversion, uh, slump reversion time, sorry, um, improved pumpability and obviously there's been significant improvements in um, the sort of equipment that could actually pump concrete which so I've seen in my 42 years I've seen major advances in that and as an industry we've got to keep um, um, those sorts of improvements going. Um, you know, activating shock creep when it's required. So when we're underground like we're, we're there and it's taken um, 40 minutes in traffic to, to get the truck there, you know, what's the impact of that on the guys that are um, where they are trying to do that work? So these sorts of things is, is, is um, the next slide I'll, I'll sort of make my, make my point. Um, um, and, and here it is, and the, and the point here, and, and the thing I want to say is that just like the massive size of, of that tunnel boring machine, um, I can't remember where that was, it might have been Crow's Nest that that breakthrough was, um, there's a massive challenge for the industry to work together as a team, and, and from here on I'm, you're going to hear me talking a lot about team, because well, that football background I talk about, there's so many analogies back to a football team as to what gives success, and they're the same things that give success um, on our infrastructure jobs. So, summarise what I've just talked about. Design, I often think that I've got probably the most exciting role on a project because you're, you're at the, the crossroads of, of the interactions with everybody. The interactions with the design consultants, so I said I've got $110 million of design to manage on, on this job. Um, that's a lot of people, a lot of uh, different consultants as well trying to pull it all together. The interactions with the client, interactions with an independent certifier, and if I listed the page of stakeholders, um, I think it's about three pages long, the number of stakeholders that actually have an interest and, and in, interface agreements on, on terms of how we might work with them during the job. And then obviously our delivery, our construction team. So getting all those inputs that I talked about to the designers at the right times, in the right way, without changing their minds, is, is, is a massive challenge. Um, so, yeah, we have our own um, in-house theme of, of striving to understand what the delivery team requires to ensure certainly the best outcomes of safe and on-time construction. We are proactive and adaptive in our thinking and approach to support the diverse needs of our client, consultant, stakeholders and construction team. So that's, that's sort of my theme, if you like. Very easy to say that. Uh, you know, what is it to, to bring it together? So, Coming together is a beginning, keeping together is progress, working to together is success. Right? And I'm going to talk for the next few minutes before we, before we finish about sort of how we do that um, on, on say the Sydney Metro job, how we did it also on North West Rail. As I said, we didn't deliver seven months early just by chance. It, it happened because of we have effectively a vision-led and values-led approach. All right. So under that we have some three, three themes. So the first theme is, is one team. And under that our sort of thoughts are we're respectful, humble and work together to achieve a common goal. We listen, we speak up and support the final decision. And you'll see a common thread here. We plan for safety and we work safely. So, you know, in my role as design director and my previous experiences as project manager and construction managers, I know what's got to be done at the design stage to ultimately get a safe outcome in the, in the field. It's a massive challenge, but if we don't get the thinking at the design stage, um, the risks go up tenfold. Responsibility. Again, the theme of I'm responsible for understanding what I need to do and I own the delivery. 
We always hold each other to account. And again, our safety is my responsibility. So for every person on the job, we're wanting everyone to think like that. And I'll get to, I'll get to a photo in a minute that, that sort of emphasises that theme. And integrity. We act professionally, honestly and fairly. We do what we say we're going to do and we champion safety and challenge unsafe, unsafe acts. So, you know, building great teams ta does take a lot of work. But I'm, I'm going to say team, it, we've seen a constant, um, over my experience, it is teamwork, it is cooperation, it is, it is how we behave, how we communicate together, living our values has been a constant in terms of what delivers success. Um, you know, I, I experienced success at the elite level in, in sport, and I'll talk, I'll, I'll share that again in a minute. Um, but uh, it's probably something as engineers and as technical type people, we don't give it enough um, across, right across everybody, we don't give it enough credibility, enough, enough, enough thinking. So, you know, how we train staff. So we've got, a, I think we're up to 110 of our, our own staff out of 450 we're putting through our own leaders program because we regard everyone as a leader. It's not, it's not down to me. We want to lift everybody up. So we're doing things. So that getting back to what I said about leaving a legacy on people, we want people to come out as better people at, at the ends of these big infrastructure jobs, not just good infrastructure. Um, so investing in people to deliver real tangible improvement in skills. And obviously the last point, true, you know, true partnerships with client consultants, subcontractors sub and suppliers. The message, no one, can per no one person can do everything, but everyone can do something. So again, my, my, my thoughts on that picture. There's a lot of guys there. Um, you know, caring for those around you. People build projects, not processes or contracts. And we're only as strong as our weakest link. It's something that um, I came from my football days. So that, that thinking about lifting everyone up, taking to time to think what others need to assist their role. Teams work better together. Um, speed is not everything direction is. So as design team manager, I'm having to have my wits about me a step ahead, constantly evaluating, challenging, keeping an eye on the bigger picture. What is today's priority? You know, what is next week's? What is next month? Wanting people to be solution orientated. Problems, problems are only issues. They're not problems, they're issues to be, to, be, to be solved and having that attitude. My role as design director but is to be sharing the vision Learning, learning, um, learning the lessons, learning, sharing the lessons. Not blaming, not condemning. So an industry where we think and behave like that is going to be a better industry always. Um, in football we used to talk about the team that makes the least mistakes usually wins. The best teams make less mistakes when the pressure gets more and more. So as we lead into AFL final series, the best team at the end of the day will be, the, will be I guarantee, and you need a little bit of luck, but they'll do those two things. You know, just keeping your goals in, in focus. Um, I won't go through that, I've already covered some of that. Um, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is, is not an act, but a habit. So I'm, I'm going to encourage the industry to just to continue to make excellence a habit. Do what you're saying you're going to do, focus on the task and maintain um, that self and team discipline. Um, high performing teams makes excellence that business as usual. Um, that excellence then leads to innovations. It leads to better production rates for everybody. Consultants making money, we're making money, um, early project completions, enhanced reputations. The only easy day was yesterday. I suppose my, my thought about, about this photo, and you can just see the guy on the side, uh, yeah, you can, can see him there, um, taking that time to plan together, share and solve together. Don't ponder too long like the single guy there pondering, pondering what's going on. 
you know, what needs to be explained to others so that they can do their role when they need to do it in the right sequence. Um, you know, that, that taught none of us like surprises. Um, and I guess just as, as, we f as I finish off, staying ahead of the game, complacent, any, like any football team, complacency is the enemy of success. You know, so you've got to watch out for it. Um, I've emphasised it very, very quickly, but never underestimate culture and values. You know, you want to continue to make the project one that uh, people want to work on. Yeah. Enjoy coming to work type, type, type thinking. And, and valuing people, uh, giving them what they need to do the job and, and go away and, and they'll go way and above and beyond um, for you. As I finish off, the time your game is most vulnerable is when you're ahead, never let up. So there's a, there's a, again, there's a football theme in there, it's, there's persistence. So infrastructure jobs that are going over two and three and four and five years, they are hard work, but if you don't have the behaviours and the values and the, and the thinking where people are really caring for each other and, 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 and serving each other um, and ultimately serving the, serving the public, I don't think you'll have the right ingredients for success. As I finish off, a couple of very quick slides. There's some segments heading into the tunnel. Uh, tunnel boring machine finishing the job at, at, at Epping. I, I won't talk any further because time is running out. Um, and I suppose I'll, I'll finish with this one because um, it was precious to me having played um, and, and stood out in the middle knowing the success we'd achieved as a football team. But I think the thing that has come out for me over my, my years, it's the same sense of, of pride and satisfaction when you know the, the hurdles and the, the ups and the downs that you've gone through with a group of people facing some of the, the hard decisions and the adversities and the, adversities and the challenges of you know, how are we going to do this. When you, when you get to the end point, um, it is the same sense of satisfaction for me to go, yes, we did it together. And if we think at the end of the day, we're doing it together and delivering for people that are going to use that infrastructure for many, 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 many years, years to go. Um, the Glenfield um, or the Leppington station there, I've thrown in the Mekong Bridge for me, there was a sense there we were representing Australia. It wasn't just John Holland. We were on the stage with um, representing Australia between putting the first ever bridge between Laos and Thailand over the 12th biggest river in the world, the Mekong. Um, but that sense of serving people, caring for people, there were some fantastic relationships we had with our workforce, which were literally out of the rice fields. And to finish off in a, a location just up from that photo that I showed you of Lane Cove earlier, um, completed infrastructure that's serving people. Thank you.